A lot of people know what Rescue does. It allows you to connect from a computer to another computer, tablet, or mobile phone. What surprises people is how many different ways that connections can be made and how many of those ways are customizable. Today I'm going to cover 10 different ways a connection can be made. First, let's cover the most basic connection using a six digit code and sending the end user to logmein123.com. From the technician console, we start by clicking new session, then create pin code. This will give us a six digit pin that we can give to the end user. On the target machine, the end user goes to logmein123.com where they enter the six digit pin code we created for them. They now need to download and run the temporary rescue applet. Back in the technician console, we see this session as waiting for assistance. We simply need to start the session by double clicking on it or clicking the green button above. Now we can launch remote control and the end user simply needs to click OK. If you like the pin code connection method, keep in mind this can be completely customized. If you go into the admin center and click on the resources tab, you will find the HTML needed to host the pin code box on your own website. The connection start is still the same for the tech who clicks on new session and create pin code, but instead of directing the end user to the log me in site, I am instead going to direct them to zayona.com, where, as you can see, I have built an entire page around the pin code box. After entering in the pin code here, the connection will run exactly the same as it did from the log me in site. I now want to talk about the channel method of connection and explain a little about what it is and how it works. A channel is something you host on your own website. And as you can see, I have done that here on the contact page of my Steakhouse website. At my support company, I have different people or teams for different support issues. So if someone comes to my site and has a problem with Mac, they could click here. Or if they had a problem with email, they could click here. Once they click the link, the download of the software will run as normal. The technician will need to be in the tech console, and the session will show up in the queue as waiting for assistance. They would pick up and connect to the waiting session completely as normal. The setup for channels is done under the admin center and under the tab labeled channels. Here we can click on a channel, name it, and find the HTML needed to host it on your web page. Now, when you click on the group as a whole, you can assign a channel simply by checking it off. Every account has 10 channels. All you need to do is set them up. The calling card can be installed by a technician from the calling card tab in the tech console. The technician simply needs to click on Install Calling Card, and it will install silently in the background. Alternatively, the technician can get access to an MSI installer from the Admin Center. The calling card is an installable agent that resides on the customer's machine. The interface is completely customizable. As you can see in my example, I have my company logo as the desktop icon. Once opened, you can see my custom header and background. The calling card performs an update every time it runs that checks the settings on the calling card tab in the admin center. If there are any changes, the calling card will pull them down immediately. The calling card can be used in two ways. Number one, a pin code portal. Using the calling card as a pin code portal allows for a much faster connection as the end user does not have to navigate to a web-based pin portal or download anything. The calling card can also be deployed in, a, in limited user environments so that users who normally cannot download an applet to connect would have the option to use the calling card. Number two, the calling card has a connect to remote support option. 
This utilizes our channel system so that customers can start a rescue session and be assigned to the next available technician. The fields are customizable. You can opt to make certain fields mandatory and other options. Once the user has filled in all of the fields, they will click connect and be dropped into a channel session. The technician will see the session appear in his queue, at which point he can double click it to accept. The calling card MSI can be generated in the admin center on the channel organization tab. Fill in the installer name field and click generate to generate a new calling card, or you can select from a list of pre-generated installers down below. All of the calling card customization happens on the calling card tab in the admin center. From here you have several customization options. A few of these include application name, logos and templates, help and support URLs, custom fields, even what connection method the calling card defaults to. You can even disable other connection methods. Once you've made changes, click Save. Connections can also be made via email. In the Tech Console, the tech clicks New Session and then chooses the Email tab. Here they are presented with two options, Send Email via my default client or Send Email on my behalf using the Log Me and Rescue servers. I am going to choose the second of the two and put the email address I want the invitation to go to. Now I need to click Email Link. On the target computer, the end user gets the email and simply clicks on the link in the email. This will start the same download process and run as normal. The tech will also pick up and run the session as normal. The next connection method, link, is very similar to the email method in how it works. It only differs in how it is delivered. The tech would need to click on the new session button and then choose the link tab. Here they would click copy link to clipboard. Now they can deliver this code via any number of different methods. I'm going to use a chat protocol to deliver my message and paste the link into the body and send it over. The end user gets the message and simply clicks on the link in the email. This will start the same download and run process as normal. The tech will also pick up and run the session as normal. Unattended access allows technicians to access a Windows PC without any action from the end user. It is a permission-based tool that requires authorization from the user for initial setup. Unattended access can be set up by navigating to the Unattended Access tab in the Rescue Console. Once on this tab, there are various options for setup. Credentials required allows for two types of setup. Number one, at connection. This means that whenever a technician tries to connect to an unattended access machine, they are prompted to enter administrative credentials. Number two, at setup. This means that upon the initial setup of unattended access, the end user is prompted to enter their Windows credentials. These are then captured by the rescue session so that the technician can log into the machines at a later date without needing to know or input the credentials. Below the credentials area, technicians can specify a time and date range for how long the machine will be accessible. With the At Connection option, the technician can elect to set the date range for indefinite. This requires that the technician knows the administrative credentials to connect and the explicit permission from the end user during initial setup. With the At Setup option, technicians are limited to a two weeks maximum of unattended access duration. This is for security reasons. Rescue does not allow the storage and captures of passwords for longer than two weeks to ensure security for the end user. Below the date range configuration area, you can specify a name and description. 
Once all options have been configured, click Request Unattended Access. This will prompt the end user with the date range you have specified and the options to accept or cancel. If using the At Setup option, they will also need to fill in their password before accepting. Once unattended access has been set up, the technician can access the machines by clicking on the orange computers button. Selecting the unattended access tab and finding the desired PC in the list. Double click or select the PC and click connect. You can also use the filter option to search. As you can see, when unattended access is used, the customer gets a notification that someone is logged in. Once the session is ended, they can click on the details to see any of the previous logins as well as details associated with them. This also includes the option to revoke unattended access. Connect on LAN allows you to access a Windows PC on the same network you currently reside. This works across VPNs and VLANs as well. As long as you have connectivity to the end PC, Connect on LAN can be used. Connect on LAN is accessed under the Computers button. Once in the Computers window, click on the Connect on LAN tab. Once this tab is open, Rescue does an auto-discovery process on your network using the NetBIOS protocol. You can connect to a computer by double-clicking its NetBIOS name in the list, typing its NetBIOS name in the Connect To field, or by typing the IP address directly. If you are on a domain and logged into your PC as an admin, Rescue will automatically try and pass through your credentials in order to authenticate. You'll notice that on the customer side, an icon pops up in the task tray. The customer can click on this and it will bring up the customer applet window. In the event that you are not on a domain or you are not logged in as an admin, you will see a prompt for credentials. Enter the credentials and click OK to continue. When connecting to mobile devices, you have several different ways to make a connection. You start by clicking New Session in the upper left-hand corner. Here you can direct the mobile user to LogMeIn123 and generate a six-digit PIN code, send an email, or SMS. I'll demonstrate the process of connecting to the Android devices via the Google Marketplace by sending an SMS. Enter the mobile number you wish to connect to and click Send SMS. On the device, the user will receive and open the message. This will redirect them to the Google Marketplace where they will be prompted to download and install the rescue application. Once this is installed and opened, a six-digit PIN creates the connection between the technician and user device. You now have several rescue tools at your disposal, including remote control, system diagnostics, file transfer, chat, and more.